Welcome to the WHBC Sunday Talks podcast. Sunday Talks is a weekly roundtable discussion about theological and cultural topics. For more information and show notes, visit whbcconway.org slash Sunday Talks. Here's your host, Pastor Larry White. Welcome to Sunday Talks. We are in a series for the spring. We are in near next to the last week of this series we're calling Revival. It's been an interesting journey uh, talking about revival and talking to men who I uh, greatly admire, men of God, that, that have taught me a lot about what revival is, what they're experiencing. Name them off. Bill Elif, John Venable, Mark Talbert, Sean Mills, Justin Brooks. And today... Uh, blessed to have Jordan Bowen with us. Thank and you. Uh, I'm excited for y'all to get to meet Jordan. Some of you may not know him. He, he spent a few years in Conway, right? And uh, is back to just for this for this episode. But every one of those, Jordan, have been beneficial to me. I've learned something. I've also seen several things in common. In fact, I'll get to that in a minute. Some things that you've shared. Uh, we, we actually were, when this is being recorded the day before, we were in a meeting, a prayer, prayer gather, meeting yes. about a prayer gathering. Yeah. And uh, but you said some things that will be be uh, connected with that. But yeah. Jordan is the pastor of the Hillcrest Community Church in Little Rock. And welcome uh, to Woodland Heights Thank and you. our Sunday talks. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I know. Here's what I do know. Uh, you you are were CBC. You went to CBC. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, I did. Are you still at New Orleans Seminary? Or you I, I, I finished. You mm-hmm. finished? You graduated? Yeah, yeah, I did it all online. See, and... that's the greatest seminary in the world. I don't know if you knew that when you came here. but this Well, is, yeah, yeah. That, that's my take, too. That's, so, that's right. Yes. Okay, well, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, cool. Well, tell us a little about yourself and your family. Yeah, so I have uh, my wife, Sarah. We've been married for seven years, and we have two little boys and a baby number three on the way. So that'll be any day now. Yeah. So, um, and uh, we, we came to Little Rock about six years ago Mm. and um had a heart to uh, plant a church focus on the nations and really saw ourselves doing that in another country saw ourselves doing that in another state another city and somehow the lord uh, drew us into little rock into the hillcrest community and we began to realize there are a lot of people uh, from around the world in little rock that need jesus and are ready for it and uh, there was it was just great need and so by God's goodness and grace, um, we began that journey in Hillcrest and um, our church. They, uh, it's uh, two churches that merged and became one. Yeah, um, when yeah. we, we were sharing a building and then during COVID, COVID um, Woodlawn Baptist Church uh, merged in with us. I was trying to remember us. what the yeah. Wood, yeah, Woodlawn. Woodlawn. Yeah, 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 I, did, yeah. I almost want to say Woodland yeah. again. But I no, parked yeah. <laughs> there for Razorback games when they were yes. at War Memorial. Yeah, yes, that's, that's right. Yeah. 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 And so, um, and that was just God's goodness and, um, and yeah. merged in, they merged in with us and, and during COVID and became mm-hmm. who we are now, Hillcrest Community Church. Yeah. So, Well, tell us a little bit about the church. So you, these two churches merged, which I know is, I've been through that, trying to help churches do that yeah. and navigate that. It's difficult. Yeah. Mitch Tapson was pastor at, right. at Woodlawn, and and I shared with you yesterday that Mitch and I pastored two of the same churches. That every time I think every time he moves, I moved. In fact, he moved to Conway, and I moved over here. So right. we've got. A, right. I love Mitch Tapson. But tell us a little about so where exactly that's located and all the details about Hillcrest. Yeah, we're we're real close to War Memorial Stadium, so we're just right right up the hill from War Memorial, and um, Hillcrest is an old community of mm-hmm. Little Rock, one of the mm-hmm. oldest. Um, it's a very uh, um, millennial, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Gen Z kind yeah. of community, really. A lot, but then you've you've got a lot of old people that older generation that's lived there a whole life. Yeah, you know, grew up there, live in those homes. Their, yeah. their parents built it and they inherited it. And so, um, but a community that draws a lot of um, lost people mm-hmm. and a lot of internationals that are studying. Um, in the medical schools because we're surrounded by the university there, yeah. ULR, and then the medical university. And so that's kind of um, the demographic of it. Yeah. Um, but the, it really is a community that it does not have very many churches mm. at all and um, and needs Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. so we um, we went there because we, we wanted a place to... Mm-hmm. To reach people that needed Jesus. So, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, hear, I hear great things are happening, and you've shared some of those uh, with us. Uh, uh, in, in fact, you know, I told you earlier that I stalked you, so I, I got out and I saw the church's website and watched some worship services, and just just seeing the energy that's there. And there's, it's not just young people. You've got some yeah. older, you got people yeah. my age and older, probably, yeah. and yeah. a good combination. It seems like it's really blended well as two it congregations. Is. Yes. Came yeah. God has just been so good to us in yeah. that, and yeah. and the leadership that helped model walk us through that. 
It yeah. was just phenomenal. And, and you're right. I, I mean, um, and, and the unique thing is uh, the, the senior adult disciple, the young adults. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are, or it should be. It's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. It is. I yeah. mean, the, 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 I would say the thing that I get the most excited about is, is bumping into someone that's 70, 80 years old, and they've got their arm around a 20-year-old. Yeah, and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna hang out this week," and yeah. and they pray together, they do life together. Yeah. It's just, it's just God's goodness that, to that us. That's good. It yeah. is. Yeah, and you know, I, I this was pre Mitch Tapson, and that church's been there for a long time, mm-hmm. and had had some really glory years of the past. Mm-hmm. But I remember uh, during the times in between, there was some really down times. It's so yeah. good to see yeah. the revitalization of a church yeah. in a community where, like you said, there's lots of people and lots of, lots of needs. Yes, sir. Um, what I wanted to talk a lot about too, in addition to this is talk about revival and about yeah. just what's going on in our world. Um, you know, again, stalking you, I found this quote that you put on Facebook, which I it just, I really like this, that revival, no matter how great or small in its ultimate scope, always begins with individual believers whose hearts are desperate for God and who are willing to pay the price to meet Him. Yeah. And that's, I'll try to say this guy's name right, Del... Del Fesenfield, Del, yeah. Fesenfield, Del, Jr., yeah. yeah, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, the hearts who are desperate for Him. I love that, that about the desperation and revival. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and it, with that, I saw a video that you posted on there, really kind of, I guess it was during Asbury when yeah. that was going on, just your own heart. It sounded like it may have even been a Sunday morning or mm-hmm. sat, it was a weekend, I think. And you're just, you are praying for yourself to have revival and asking people to pray for you. And I, man, I, I, I love transparency. And I love yeah. people who are just genuine and real. And I was like, man, if I wasn't a member of Woodland Heights, I'd go to Hillcrest Community right. Church. And I was <laughs> like, well. that, I love that, you know, and that you are in, in, encouraging others. But talk a little bit about desperation and revival. Yeah, I, I, think, it's, um, I think it's a necessity. Yeah. I, I don't really think that you you can't be revived if you don't think you need to be revived. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. at least in in the core of it, for it yeah. to to desire it. And I love that quote because it it gives you hope to know that not everything is going to look like Asbury. Right, right. That yeah. just as valuable is what can happen in your living room. Yes, that's great. Yeah. And what can happen in in your small group? What yeah. can happen in your Sunday school class? Yeah. What can happen in your family? And, and I think that, that can spread. Mm-hmm. But the ingredients, so to speak, it's just God. It's just God moving, right, right. but us posturing our lives. And, mm-hmm. and I think the, the two things I think of there is, is desperation, meaning mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm willing to draw near to God, right. trusting, as James 4 says, that he will draw near to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the expectation that if I draw near to God, he will come near, near to me, yeah, and so yeah. there's there there is that, and I and so when I found that quote, I was reading his book, Ablaze, and um, when I when I read that, I thought, man, I, I want that in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 desperate for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to understand what it looks like to have a a freshness yeah. in my relationship yeah. with the Lord, that even those that know me best, my wife, mm-hmm. would say, you're different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I could, I could just say, well, it's because um, I'm, I'm putting in my time with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm leaning yeah. in, and He's leaning right back. Yeah. And that yeah. expectation, you know, God can do something with a, a family that's expecting uh, to hear from Him. Mm-hmm. There's something powerful mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think it's easy. You're a pastor. I'm a pastor. It's easy to get that place in ministry where because Sunday's always coming. Yeah. There's always needs. And we get you can get there where you just kind of go through the motions and you you kind of know what to do mm-hmm. and there's not that sense of desperation. I even think about people that are coming to church it's like, hey, this is what I do on Sundays. I go and you know I, I'm assuming that that's how they feel. I know that's how I feel sometimes as right. I'm getting up to preach. I'm not desperate. You know, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. This isn't. This isn't. Uh, I don't realize since the urgency of the moment and 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 I think one thing that's helped me with the revival is that. There are these waves and times that right. where God is moving. You know, we talked about that yesterday about right. Henry Blackaby, and that you know, mm-hmm. you sense where God's working. And I kind of I feel like from from your conversation and yesterday, and then and then just as well today that that's what you've been experiencing at your church to yeah. some extent too. M- maybe right. from the beginning has that yeah. been kind of true since you since Look, you came there? Um, looking back, I would probably say that that is true. Yeah. Um, I don't think I was aware of it. Okay, you know? yeah, um, because. Uh, because I was in the middle of it, right? And, right, and yeah. um, to be honest, a little, a little uh, wore out. 
yeah and a yeah. little burned out yeah and, and a little hurt mm. um which stirred me to a desperation for the lord yeah because yeah. i was like lord you're you're doing wonderful things but i i still don't I, I'm I'm still struggling, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I, I'm still hurting. I'm still longing for a deeper relationship with you. I'm, yeah. I'm pouring yeah. out, but I'm I'm not sensing you pouring in. And yeah. And um and I think you're right. I think a lot of people, um, we walk in every Sunday, maybe with that mm -hmm. that we're here, but we, man, we we came in barely, you know. Right. And, right, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And and but that doesn't mean that we can't expect. Mm -hmm. that god is going to draw me yeah yeah and um but i i do i think looking through the years especially these past two years the lord has worked very uniquely mm -hmm. in our church yeah. by um groups of people and mm -hmm. individuals coming to the place of we we just are hungry for the presence yeah. of god yeah. And, yeah and satisfied only yeah. by the presence of god yeah yeah you used a term yesterday in our meeting, and then also uh, saw it in, uh, on in your church website, I think maybe, or on on yeah. uh, one of your programs. Kind of a, it sounds like a theme of things, that you, but it's man, these two, these three things go together: being humble, hungry, and holy. Um, so, what is? Because you've said that a lot. I heard right. that's great. Yeah. To I mean, it's a great reminder. Of yes. what's, that's a good place to be to want to those things: Hung, humble, hungry, and holy. What does that mean to you, and then how does yeah. that how does that relate to revival? Yeah, so we uh, a couple of years ago we were actually I was um, listening to a podcast on revival, One mm -hmm. Cry podcast, mm -hmm. and um, Dr. Steve Gaines was talking about Second Chronicles seven verse fourteen, mm -hmm. if my people humble themselves, yeah. seek my face, and okay. turn from their wicked ways, then yeah. I will come and and he broke it up. He said humble, hungry, and holy, and. Wow. Um, it just it just stuck yeah and yeah. I was with my team and we were talking through that and and I just said that that's what I want in my life mm -hmm. and that's what I want for us as a staff mm -hmm. because if we can model that if we can live that it, mm -hmm. it's gonna pour out into the yeah. church yeah so for about a year um, that's just how we we operated and mm -hmm. and I would teach on it some and then about the at the end of that year, we were kind of readjusting some vision and some strategy, mm -hmm. and we kind of began to ask the question: What does a um, a a disciple of Hillcrest look like? Mm. And we just said, "There you go. They're humble. They're hungry, yeah. and they're holy." Yeah. yeah. And from that flows uh, mm -hmm. what what we believe God wants to do in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so we just began to structure. I mean, we pray every week, uh, humble, hungry, holy, and that's yeah. part of our prayer. That's part of our worship. It's mm. it's just a common language. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it does. It comes from Second Chronicles um, yeah. Yeah. seven. Yeah. Uh, great. Yeah. But it's uh, it's all of scripture. Yes. Uh, and yeah. I think that's the thing that has just blown me away. I I mean, you look at the life of of Isaiah mm -hmm. when he encounters the Lord. It mm -hmm. humbles yeah. him yeah. because he sees God's holiness. Yeah. And then he he seeks to be made right before God, yeah. and and he is God's gracious in that, and he's made right before God. And then he says, "Here I am, send me." He's hungry mm -hmm. to yeah. be used, yeah. and and I mean, just um, there's just countless examples, and it just seems like as we, I mean, James four eight before James four eight before the draw near, mm -hmm. it's humility, humility, yeah. and then right after the second part of James four eight is now clean your hands, wash your hearts. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's holiness. Right. And yeah. and so we do we I, I try to tell myself, you know, when I encounter the Lord and I and I see him and how holy he is, hmm. the closer I get, the more wicked I, I see myself. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and it makes me say, I, I want to be holy as he is holy, hmm. like he says in hmm. Leviticus. Hmm. And that's humbling. <laughs> right. Right. And, and right. He 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 humbles us. Yes. Yeah. And then in that moment, I think as you just draw near, you encounter mm -hmm. Wow, he he he's a he's a living water mm. that continually satisfies, mm -hmm. and so I'm gonna keep coming. Yeah, yeah. And you're just hungry yeah, for that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you know, heard the old preacher say one time, nobody struts into the presence of God. No. You know that we yeah. we and that's what I've seen through this because it's we've been experiencing here and yeah. the other pastors I've talked with have been experiencing their churches and know of others. There's really been a sense of revival and renewal people coming to faith and people really just getting serious about walking with the lord and with that is in every one of those instances i've heard people use this term humble that, mm -hmm. that you know that and for us personally is that it's it's humbling to us because yeah there's nothing special about me that god would want to do that in my church or in your church or, or, right. or in us that you know right. well, even I'm, I'm still overwhelmed you know 40 years afterwards yeah. Yeah. that god saved me right I mean, much less that he would want to 
okay, you did this one work, but that you'd want to continue to do that. Right. That's that ought to. I mean, if we yeah. ever get over that, you know, then we're we're in a bad place. Yeah, we need yeah. revival. Yeah, I, I, I talked to <laughs> yeah. a brand new believer yesterday, and he's going to be my disciple making partner. And he got emotional talking about his new faith. I said, "Man, don't ever get over that. Man, don't no. don't ever lose that. Yeah. It is humbling for us to think about. That, that's a, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna use your your line there. I don't think it's Steve Gaines. I think it was yours. So I'm, well, gonna, okay. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you credit. Uh, <laughs> one one thing that I, I, I was, you said earlier too about hurt and and yeah. don't know how many details you want to go into that, but I I do think God uses that in desperation. He uses brokenness. Yeah. And so many times in my life, I can chart times where. Uh, after, in fact, you know, others have said that God really doesn't use anybody that He doesn't break them first, you know. Yeah. And, and some people don't like that in this day and age we live when everybody just wants health and wealth and all, yeah. all kinds of prosperity. But that everybody I know that God's used mightily, yeah. He's broken them down. In fact, so when someone comes to me and says, "Man, I'm, I'm, I'm having a difficult time," particularly if they're not believers or they're not where they should be with the Lord, and they tell me those things, I, I want to say that's great because now yeah. you're in a place where God yeah. can use you or where you sense your need yeah. for it. You're at so rock bottom. Yeah. So how yeah. has God used maybe just an example or a few examples for you use brokenness in your life, yeah. uh, maybe in, in, in bringing about revival for you personally or for your church? Yeah. Well, um, I heard some pastors talking about how broken they were mm. and how they got desperate before yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And it, it took time. Yeah. They, but they were willing to lean in on that time, you know, willing to mm-hmm. pay the price to meet with God. Yeah. Just, Lord, I want to hear from you and sit and being in silence. There were some men like a, a pastor in Texas, Nathan Leno, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. pastor oh, I in love Tennessee, yeah. Robbie yeah. Gallaty. Yeah. And I heard their stories and I just thought, well, that's me. Mm. And, and, and I want that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't want to feel like I'm running a machine. I want right. to feel like I love people. <laughs> yeah. And I want to feel like I love the Lord. I don't yeah. want to feel like I'm, I'm just doing life. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to know I'm, I'm doing the life God wants me to mm-hmm. do Yeah, from his presence. Yeah. And so I did, I just, I just began to cry out to the Lord mm-hmm. and, and, but you're right. It, I think it's a, it's, it's remaining broken in many yeah. ways. Yes. And, yeah. and, you know, we, we say sometimes at our church that a, a broken man or woman um, is a revived man or woman, mm-hmm. and a revived yeah. man or woman is a useful man yes. or woman. That yeah. that, that brokenness yeah. can lead. It's a yeah. posture towards that. Yeah. And and again, I think you look at Scripture, we were talking about Elijah and how, I mean, the man, he wanted to end his life. Mm-hmm. He wrote, a, yeah. he yeah. wrote a, a suicide letter to God. Yeah. And God took him to the cave that was most likely the cave where Moses mm-hmm. encountered God. Yeah. And... It was that still small voice that terrified him. No, yes. Nothing else. It was that voice, the voice of God, and he immediately yeah. he broke down. He covered mm-hmm. himself, and, but then he left useful. God said, "Now this is your next your next assignment." Right. Yeah. And I just um, I found myself there a lot. You know, in that video you referred to, mm-hmm. um, I was that was a broken day, mm-hmm. and a lot of it came from because I was desperate for the Lord and. Um, God knows that, and and Satan knows when you want the Lord yeah. to. Oh, yeah. And there yeah. was a lot of spiritual warfare going on, and I just felt the heaviness, and I just said, Lord, well, it's only you mm-hmm. that can that can um, care for me and my family and walk us ahead. Yeah. And so I cry, I'm crying out to you, and I'm willing. I'm willing mm-hmm. because I, I want to be part of, of revival, yeah. and yeah. I, I, want, I want more of you. I, I want yeah. to lean into your presence. Mm-hmm. And encounter yeah. you in a deeper way, and if that means the enemy is coming after us, then um, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that's all he wants is our willingness. He yeah. wants he wants our, yeah. our obedience, faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. God's God's obviously used that in your life. So, yeah. um, you know, in our meeting yesterday, I keep referring back to this. I wish we could have just recorded that. That was a that lot was, of a lot of great conversation talking about prayer. But you you said something, and I've heard others say this, but as it relates to revival, it's so true that the best things are not taught but caught. And, you know, um, I've known people who've studied revival movements, and, and I think it's great. I mean, Bill Elif was there mm-hmm. sitting with us, and he's obviously studied a lot of that, and Don Moore and others. Um, but once you've experienced the presence of the Lord and you've experienced maybe an extended period of time where God's moving and working, there, there becomes a hunger, like you said earlier, that... Yeah. 
That's normal. I, I want, and I, I'm so glad for you as a young. Is it? This is your first church to pastor. This is, uh, yeah, yeah. So for, yeah, first church uh, to to pastor, to lead pastor. So, yeah. you're, I told I told this to Justin Brooks the other day. Man, you guys are spoiled to get this in your first experience. Yeah. But, you, but it is great. It's great. Yeah. But that this is normal. This is the way things should be, and yeah. everything else that we've considered maybe normal for is abnormal. It's not. That's not the way God intended for it to be. Right. Once you've experienced that. You want to experience that. I love the fact that you talked about this prayer gathering, which we're going to be part of in August, that um, you want to bring others with you. Because, you, again, you can't you can go back and tell your people, hey, this is what happened. But right. they were there. They saw it. They experienced it. They're going to want to get that. So just talk a little about that and how, how God uses those experiences where you're together. And, and just, you know, once you've kind of tasted this, I think you've probably seen this with your, your, your congregation where people right. have— Maybe they've been in other churches. Maybe they haven't been a believer, yeah. but they come in. And it's like this is just it's it becomes kind of contagious. Doesn't it does. It? Yeah. it does. Yeah, I I have to say, uh, change lives, change lives. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's true when when you encounter when you encounter the Lord mm-hmm. in a powerful way, uh, His presence just seems uh, the felt presence. You just yeah. sense Him uh, in a nearness. You you're never the same. Yeah. You long for that in a deeper way and and you tell others and then they want they long for yeah, that they're yeah. like well i i don't i haven't felt that way since the first day i accepted christ and yeah. it's just been downhill since then and the mm-hmm. lord's like no it, it shouldn't be that way. right right it shouldn't be that way and and so i i do believe that you know and we we say at our church that um uh, i i tell people i have learned more about the lord in praying with a group of people mm. And so, um, you know, Bill Eliff has been so kind to, when mm-hmm. I asked him to teach me how to pray, yeah. he, it, I mean, he gave me a couple of resources and I read those, but then we just got in his office and he'd say, let's pray. And mm-hmm. we just start. Yeah. And yeah. then about an hour later we'd be done and he would just kind of say, now what, you know, what, what did, what are you taking from this? And then mm-hmm. say, okay, see you in two weeks. And, okay. uh, yeah. and we'd come back and I just began to kind of, well, I caught it. Yeah. I, it wasn't taught. It was, it was like, I just all of a sudden realized Wow, I, I kind of I feel confident, right? As right. I should, yeah. walking into yeah. the throne room of the Lord, yeah. and and I I know I, I but it wasn't yeah it wasn't a book it yeah. was well that and that's such a good word as a pastor but and I'm guilty of this that I will you know tell somebody what to do or or, or just assume that people know right. that this is normal you know that and there's right. so many that particularly like you said even believers who've been believers a long time but they don't have any understanding and in fact we talked a little about this again i'm referring to yesterday bill at that extended period of time of revival they had he said when our staff yeah. our elders didn't know what to do you know right but that and it but it's refreshing once you've experienced that in a church has gone through that that again you kind of get used to it it's like there's part of you tar, part of me sometimes it's been saying these last few weeks for us is that when is this going to end? You know, when is because it's that we've had probably the, the most extended period of time for us that mm. where we've had baptisms almost every week. That's and exciting. It's been okay. This isn't this isn't normal for us, but it, right. this is the way it should have been. And I pray right. that I don't want it. I don't want it to end. But no. but if it does, I hope that I'm at that place you've talked about being at a desperate, broken. Yeah. God, we we want we want Him more than we want right. the results and people and all those things. Yeah. Uh, but it, that is so satisfying. And I what I, 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 I'm encouraged by is that, again, I parked at Woodlawn years ago. I've been at Woodland Heights for a while. I've been here before. And both of our churches were not experiencing these things right. in years past. No. And and in some places, I, I probably would have said at Woodlawn, I said it here for this church, is that, well, that probably never happened here. That yeah. it'd be it'd be really yeah. hard for that to happen, and God has done it. Right, and and that just encourages me. Whether you're at Little Rock or Conway right. or wherever you may be, God can do things. Just like you said earlier, God can do it in your living room. Right, yeah, and He wants to. That's right. the good thing is He wants, he to, wants to wants to meet us. Yeah. He wants to. Yeah, and and I just you know that's I think the key is um, a room full of people that have encountered the Lord through the mm-hmm. week coming together on a sunday i mean just imagine right yes yeah you know yeah, it's, but yeah. it's it's a it's a daily thing yeah of us posturing our lives towards him and, right and that yeah there's just nothing more satisfying yeah. than yeah. being with the lord nothing yes. nothing yeah. nothing yeah i've just i'm just starting to realize that um mm-hmm. yeah i'm just i want to be so content in him yeah you know yeah. nothing yeah. else satisfies yeah and um 
but I want everybody to know that. Yeah. Well, and it's exciting for me to hear you say as a young pastor that you're learning to go deep with the Lord yeah. alone with Him. Because then you can, because God's going to give you, He's going to give you many more opportunities to be out in front of people right. and, to be, and to be pastoring people and leading them. But we've seen the failure of so many right. successful pastors who yeah. were doing great on the stage, but not in the one on one. And, you know, and, and yeah. you know, by the grace of God, I, I haven't fallen in that place. Right. That it certainly could happen to me. Yeah. But the but but the two go hand in hand. And and uh, um, man, I commend you for for what God's doing in your life, how God's using you, and more power to you, brother. And I want to see more Thank and more you. young pastors. Yeah. Uh, as a as a middle aged pastor, I'm greatly encouraged to see guys coming behind it. Preach the word. I listen to your sermon. Mm-hmm. Man, this guy's up here preaching. Me preaching the word, uh, unapologetic, and. Focusing your people on on what people in the church need to be focused on and drawing people together. Um, great things ahead for Hillcrest Community Church and for well, Jordan Bowen you. and your family. Got a baby on the way and yes. all these exciting things. Um, would you mind praying as we close out uh, our time for for your church and for Wood, for Woodland Heights as well? But even yeah. I know there are pastors that watch this and. Some of them are not yeah. there. I mean, they, yeah. they are. Yeah. They're praying as hard as we're praying. They're right. preaching hard, but it's it's their church has got warfare going on. Right, and maybe just as you pray for yeah. us, pray for, pray for them, and we'll close out with to. that. I'd be honored okay. to. Yeah, let's pray, Lord. We do. We uh, for every listener now, Lord, that even right now, Holy Spirit, you would just mm-hmm. stir in them a um, a longing for you. Mm. Um, that we would not we would not quench you. We would not grieve you but we would cooperate with you. And, and when you called us to draw near, we would draw near and we would listen and we would wait and we would be in your word and in prayer. And so Lord, I do, I pray right now over every listener, wherever they're at, that they would begin to see and even just draw a circle in their mind mm-hmm. and get in it and say, Lord, bring revival right here. Mm-hmm. They would see a circle around their house and they'd say, Lord, I want revival in my family. I want revival in my business. That every pastor that hears this, they would begin to say, Lord, bring it right here in my office before I step out of here into any meeting. May I leave a man that's met mm-hmm. with God. Mm-hmm. And Lord, that you would just stir that into Sunday mornings when their faith family is all gathered together, Lord, that they would just cry out to you. And Lord, that we would be willing to um, to operate with you. We'd be willing to adjust a service. We'd be willing to remove any barriers mm-hmm. that might hinder us from, Lord, just um, listening to you and responding. And Lord, I pray right now for Woodland Heights, Lord, just for a great outpouring, uh, just mm-hmm. um your felt presence, that it would just be uh, so real, that it would be real on Monday mm. all the way through Sunday, mm. that uh, people would just, they would come in uh, these, these bu- this, this building and, and they would just sense, well, God is here. Mm. And, and that's what would draw them, mm. Lord, is, is this hunger for you. And Lord, I do, I pray that for Hillcrest, yes. Lord, for... I pray that for the nations that gather there, Lord, and I pray for those, Lord, that are in our community that are far from you. Even mm-hmm. now, Holy Spirit, just stir them, draw them to you, and Lord, Lord, let a revival come in such a way that it would just it would awaken the neighborhoods around mm-hmm. all of our churches yes. and our city and our nation and the nations, God. Mm-hmm. Because Lord, I, I do. We there is nothing, nothing that will satisfy but you. So, Lord, let us make everything about you, mm. Lord, um, and whatever that means for us. Lord, we pray against the enemy. We bind the enemy. Mm. Lord, we, we are willing to, to count the cost to mm. draw near to you. And thank you for the promise mm. that you draw near to us. You are with mm. us. Mm. You are with us. And all glory to you, Christ. For you, we are saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah.